microphone turned on. Tick. We got one thing. I think I got the microphone going. Have I? Yes. Let me know. Let me go and know if you can hear me loud and clear. We've had some, we've had some hiccups in the last few weeks. In actual fact, you know, some little failures, some little imperfections. And I was, I was on the Talking Landscape Photography Show last night. If you haven't heard of it, there was an episode last night that we were doing. And look, when I came off that, you know, I wasn't overly happy with the way I was able to articulate what I was trying to say and I was contemplating, you know, the ups and downs of the last few weeks and the imperfections and the, and the mini failures. And then I started to think, well, there's, there's some parallels between this and art. You know, as artists, we have all these little, it's, it's basically just a journey of little mini failures that offer us this opportunity to improve and grow and it's really important as artists that we don't turn away from those little failures and imperfections and get scared of approaching them and in actual fact we should embrace them um, because not only is it an opportunity to learn and grow but within those little failures can sometimes be the absolute seed of creation, you know, creativity. We can be inspired by it, can be actually born within those failures. And if we turn away from them, we might just completely miss out on those little, little incredible moments. Now, I got no idea why I decided to tell you that then. It just felt kind of right. It felt geez in the background going, yeah. Um, I was a bit late coming to the stream just before because we were, we were deep in conversation, just having a chat. Um, you know, incredible incredible person you're going to love her you're going to love her work she's incredibly creative and maybe while I, while I, what you know the reason I was telling you about my own little bits of failures is I think maybe some of G's work might be born from the creation of little errors and mistakes that she often finds and then you know turns them into something absolutely incredible let's bring her on hang on a sec G I'm just going to turn your microphone on and switch over Whoops, hang on, let me go full screen here. Hey, G, how you doing? Hey. Yep, we got two mics going, we got this going. So far, so good. We're doing so well. That was like, damn, that was a battle cry, Adam. I was just like, <laughs> yes, son, yes, keep talking. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about those failures and imperfections and being scared of sort of, you know, being scared of falling down? That's absolutely the basis and in fact um I ordered everything this week because in the way I have because it is literally my slow descent into failure and madness so uh you total yeah it's uh exactly kind of the ethos of what I'm doing embracing the weirdness the failures the yeah I mean I had a whole idea of like actually wearing makeup this morning um except I slept in uh, and my boss was like knocking on my door being like, hey, dude. And I'm like, ah. uh, and here we are um, still with a coffee in hand and a, my oh, pajamas. You look absolutely gorgeous. And I love, we, you know, we got the matching pink going on too, which is. I know. So nice. Absolutely beautiful. I, oh, someone wrote fail on the comments here. And I was like, what have I messed up? But no, they were saying <laughs> uh, stands for first attempt in learning. Absolutely. Ah, love it. It looks like we're smooth. We're going well. Uh, I, I just heard that little quote from you then, embrace our weirdness, embrace your weirdness. I actually use that as a battle cry at a lot of my workshops and it's actually part of one of the promo videos I use on one of my online courses as well. Like just, it's for me, and uh, maybe this will resonate with you a little bit as well. I feel like everything that we were very self-conscious about in our teenage years comes back to be an asset as creative artists. Oh come, my gosh. Yeah, does that ring true with you as well? Absolutely. Um, it's really funny actually. I I had uh some mentors when I was younger. Um, and they were like this well, her her name was Erin, super butch cop. She's very like her. Huh! Um, and I'd had this horrifying day, and um, she was just like, you know, everything that people give you crap about now, like for is the stuff they're gonna love you for in the future. And and I don't know. I hung on to that as a teenager and now here I am uh, probably the weirdest person I know. I mean, we are all the weirdest person we know. Right. Um, but uh, yeah. And it's just nice. Everyone's bloody weird. It's it, fabulous. Absolutely. I, I mean, I say the same thing. I think everyone's weird, but just some of us are better at, you know, faking it, hiding it, 
Whereas the artists, oh, yeah. we just get in there and say, look at my weirdness here. It is. What do you think about it? <laughs> yeah. Let it all hang out, man. It's like a lovely way to be. It's really freeing actually. <laughs> It is. It is. When when you take away that potential weakness and use it as a strength, mm. then, you know, you don't really have anything to be, you know, I guess, self-conscious about, do you really? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a great old Amanda Palmer quote, which was, I can't, it was so long ago now that I can't exactly remember it, but she was like, um, when you are like, so yourself and you like, you have no secrets, uh, you know, what are they going to, what are they going to get you for? Because like, it's all out there anyway. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. makes sense. Absolutely. All right. Should we should we go ahead and share some of your amazing share work? Tell some us some work. stories and start some conversations. Let's do this now. I've got a. What am I sharing? I'll share. We had to share the Lightroom before, didn't we? We did. Yeah. Yeah, and then play. Can you guys see this? Can you see? We it? can see it. We can see it. It's looking good. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Um. Yeah. Shall I start? Shall we start? What's the... Yep, yep, absolutely. We've just got to please move this window away from the shared application. What is happening? <laughs> thought we got through this this morning. There we go. There we go. <laughs> we don't have that message anymore. We're good. We're good. Lovely. Oh, wow. I, look, I've been a fan of your work for ages and, um, and like you, you've been one of the, you know, real inspirations in giving me a sense of creative freedom to really just do everything we just spoke about. Just be yourself, do some crazy stuff, you know. Um, I did a series of work last year of uh, drawing with crayons over the top of my uh, top of my work. I and saw those. They were great. Well, what yeah, fun. it's not finished yet. It was probably a little bit immature to go and share that so early. But, you know, we do these things. We get a bit excited nah. and a bit passionate and we throw it out there. But um, a lot of that creative, uh, creative freedom, if you like, has come from being inspired by what you do and and some of this incredible work so oh. tell, <laughs> thank you i think you're gonna make me cry to. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind this image here um so i wanted to start here i always do um my beautiful friend kate party tells me i have to start here because this is a series called the strange lonesome monsters and i did it about 10 years ago um and it was around about the time that it's got a really long involved story behind it, but it was around about the time uh, that a friend of mine was in hospital. Um, he just had a heart attack and he was waiting for a heart transplant. And at the same time, um, my birth mother, who I don't really have much of a relationship with now, but um, at the time she was also in hospital um, having brain surgery. And um, she was saying, I might die. Um, you know, and, and he was saying, so the guy who had the heart attack was like, oh, I'm going to live forever. And he died and it was oh, no. earth shattering. Um, it was like the first, he was such a, an incredible inspiration to me. It was my first boss, um, my first job that I actually really loved. I was a post-production manager and, um, he, it was also, he was like a brother to me and, um, yeah, it was the first time I'd really come into contact with loss. And at the time I was making this image and um, there was a Gregory Crudson workshop um, and for uh, in South Australia and I you had to apply to it and I just so happened to get in there. And, um, ooh, yeah, so, oh, we're starting with the feels today. If I have a little yeah, cry, everybody, absolutely. can we just accept that this is going to happen? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, when I was there... I'd made this image and, and the way I was dealing with my life at the time, because um, while he was in hospital, um, myself and a beautiful woman, Chloe Henderson, we were looking after his studio. So it was like late nights and early mornings and not having your own life. But um, when I'd get home at like two o'clock in the morning, I needed to wind down. So I would meticulously build these images. And it was the first time I ever did anything like this in particular. Um, and I took this image into Gregory Crudson. Um, we, I had a one-on-one -on -one face to face with him and it was this one and this one here, but, um, mostly this one. And I sat down in front of him, showed him the image and he said, so who are you? And I was like, oh, I'm G. And he's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a photoshopper and a photographer. He's like, yeah, I know that. That's obvious. Um, who are you? And I was like, 
I don't know. <laughs> what do you want to know? I, uh, I'm an open book. Um, and instantly the first thing he said to me was, um, tell me about your relationship with your family. And I was like, ah, uh, I, I have a family. They, they, yep. And he was like, tell me, all right, so tell me about your mother. And I lost it. I just, and I said, and so I, I said, uh, for the, I hadn't really spoken to many people about what was happening. I was, uh, I guess, losing her in a way. Um, we've never gotten along, um, but also she's in surgery and having these horrible brain surgeries and telling me she might die. So I uh, sort of, yeah, this, he was looking at this image and I, I told him about that and he said, um, okay, so is this image about that? And I said, no, definitely not. And he goes, are you kidding me? Like, you don't see that you've got a brain scan in there and a heart? And I was like, no. And I hadn't realised that these motives that I, you know, these these stories that I had been hoarding uh, in myself um, were coming, were bleeding out through this thing that I was making. Um and if that, you know, we've got this woman with in the image with white skin, like if that doesn't, and blue hair, if that doesn't represent death, I don't know what does. Um, and, you know, sticks and twigs. Um, and down the bottom, there's like a little TV and it's got um, telephone line communication in it. Um, these images were printed at about one and a half metres high. So they're quite big, they're huge. Um, and so there's all these tiny little details in there. And, and so what I got out of that, was I mean there was a lot of things I got out of that and if you ever get a chance to I don't want to like um make this person uh Gregory into some sort of myth and legend because he's just a normal guy uh we taught him how to eat potato wedges because he'd never (laughs) eaten them before um he's like a normal guy and lovely and whatever but um the portfolio review set me on a completely different course. And the words that I got out of that was you can't get away from yourself, no matter what you try and do, you know, you are always going to be you. So Mm. I was trying so hard not to be this broken person who was dealing with family stuff and dealing with heart transplants and dealing with a person, you know, dealing with grief and death, but I was, uh, and it was coming out in my artwork all over the place, just bleeding everywhere. So that was sort of, the, that was where everything started for me. Um, so, Isn't that inc- yeah. Incredible that that one little moment can just, you were already, you were already there kind of doing it, but just give you that clarity and that direction, I suppose, or awareness. Yeah, I didn't know. I had no idea that that was happening. And it's so ridiculous because it's so obvious, like so obvious to me now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Yeah. So, uh, and I was obsessed with getting things perfect and perfection and stuff like that. So the skin on this poor woman, I, I, you know, um, is like, you know, there's no hint of a blemish or anything like that. Um, I mean, the work is blemished, but yeah, so that was that. And then this one, I did six pieces over that time. So I did three, there's actually 12 of them. Um, but we curated them down to six and the exhibition, uh, Strange Lines and Monsters um, at the Light Gallery here in Adelaide. Um, there were six giant pieces. Uh, and there were three of them that were made the three or the two and a half years before he passed away, um, before Jack passed away, and then the two and a half years after. So um, they took me a long time. This is Photoshop 10 years ago. So um, it's a different yeah, ball game, uh, I guess. Um, now a... these can be made a lot quicker, but, yeah. you know, was, yeah so there was already layers um, was there like was that pre-layers or there was still layers there in 10 years there was ago? layers yeah we yeah. it was uh cs we were into the cs years then so okay. it would have been cs2 cs3 maybe oh, that was um when I started too, yeah. yeah and it was uh so a lot of these had to be constructed because they're as i said one and a half meters high um they had to be constructed in pieces yeah. uh so yeah um it's good fun it was really okay. yeah and were they printed as one unit, like, or were they printed in pieces as well? Um, so they were just one big, massive print yeah. um, with a, uh, they were just white box frames. Um, they were huge and imposing, uh, which was quite emotional to see. Um, and it was the first time as well that I really came to, my work is mostly, what's really hard, I'm showing this stuff on screen, but my work is actually mostly resolved in print. Um, yeah. I think 
yeah. So this is the first time I ever saw my work in print and I actually cried when they came out because they're so, I don't know, there was details that I'd forgotten I'd put in, you know, over, I mean, it was a long span, about five years that I was making these. Um, and um, there was details I hadn't seen um, and ever and, and remembered. And I remember, you know, could look back at these images and see them. These little stories that I'd put in there, um, you know, these have this one here, the birds are actually shot. Um, so this was stock images, um, but okay. the birds were shot by um, my friend's mum, um, yeah. Alison Milcock. Uh, she was living on Christmas Island at the time. Um, and then, you know, the paint was my own frustrated, angry paint splatters and, you know, stuff like that. So there's all this stuff um, that that tells these stories about what I was doing with my life then. So, yeah. Actually, with the paint technique, and I, I've, yeah. I, I've seen or heard of you doing this before with some of your AIPP stuff as well, whereby you, you're using paints down on a, on a piece of paper and then photographing them and then introducing them digitally, are you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, often photographed on a mobile phone because the, uh, the phone has a, a greater depth of field available to me to be able to photograph them. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, lay them down on a bit of paper, uh, shoot them and then using blend, just something as simple as blend modes to um, to layer them up and, and oh. put them over the top of each other. So all this is is blend modes, uh, nothing, it's not fancy, just is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you get to play with all those beautiful bright colours as well. That must be fun. Yeah, the <laughs> colours actually, it's really interesting. Um, the colours came from one particular piece that I was it, like some paint it's painted on wood. So this actual piece has like heaps of wood grain in it. Um, but yeah, so the background stuff, yeah. um, I, I don't think it was that color. I think it was okay. actually reds and stuff like that. Gotcha. But uh, when I've done, I think it's an exclusion blend mode. It's kind of gone a different tone. So yeah. Oh, I love those soft greeny pinks. Just beautiful. Mm. They were such a pain in the butt to print. <laughs> Oh, right out of gamut, those ones. Um, so, yeah. And what do you think the significance of the green painted eyes is here? I'm intrigued by that element, or do we just keep that a secret? Um, I I didn't know at the time, but I think I, I was just doing it because it seemed so. The whole series has no eyes; they all have these, ah, okay. you know. Um, and I think you know now I look back on it, it just you know I was so in my own head. I couldn't see what was outside. I couldn't really like, you know, so I think that was kind of what was going on at the time. So yeah. I don't know. No, it's a beautiful metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, go for it. So this image here, um, this was originally, this is the first, I asked, um, you know, what Adam wanted to look at <laughs> in particular. And um, one of them was glitch. Absolutely. Um, so at the, uh, just a bit after Strange Lens and Monsters, um, I was sort of trying to figure out what I was doing. Um, I was running a retouching studio. So I, I'm a retouch artist mostly by trade and um, wasn't loving it, but because everything had to be perfect and everyone was obsessed with perfection. Um, and I, a friend of mine, um, Dan was doing Glitch and he yeah, he is stuff like kicking scanners as they were scanning a picture <laughs> and other stuff like pulling a memory card out before it had loaded and, you know, deliberately, you know, when you plug a memory card in and you see your images of corrupted and your yeah. heart sinks, yeah. um, whereas he was just owning it. And I was like, damn, that's cool. So cool. And it's, yeah. And so this was the first trials of that. This is um, edited in Audacity. Uh, this is a very typical glitch process um what you do is you convert an image into sound and um opening with a really a free sound editor and anybody can do this it's which is what's really exciting about it um and you just without really knowing you get you know the sound waves of the image and and the image will sound like farts and airplanes <laughs> and bleep bloops and all exactly what you would think this sort of garbage would sound like and you can uh, this was the, you can add musical filters to it. Um, and so this was the reverb filter. Okay. Um, and just added to this image. And this is what came out of that program um, when I did it. It's a bit of a, a tense process because you never know if it's going to work out. Um, so this is one version. 
This is another version of just cutting and pasting stuff in sound. Yeah. Um, oh, that's skipped ahead. Anyway, cool. That's fine. We can deal. Um, and so these were the first pieces and I, I um, exhibited these with headphones so you could just listen to the sound. Um, and that was silly and fun um, and I didn't really think much of it at the time. Um, all the headphones got stolen, which was really upsetting. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so <laughs> this kind of was just a fun experiment to begin with. But, yeah. you know, like, yeah, it reminded me of when I was in the dark room when I was a lot younger and um, there's that process of messing up, like, and you you mess up a print in the dark room, you've really messed it up, right? Um, and... But, you know, sometimes you would have printed that print in the chemistry or whatever and it, it, the chemistry is bad or something's happening and you pull it out and you go, you know what, this is crap, but I love it. Yeah. And um, and just that physical process as well where you're touching something with your hands. And it felt like that felt because it was so out of control and so out of my hands and so, and I would argue that a lot of um, really experienced darkroom technicians would say it's not out of control, um, but I'm not a chemist. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was really what this stuff was. Yeah, it's a, um, it's a, pro, it's a yeah. process that I've been going back to and it sort, of, it sort of gets back to that celebration of the imperfection or the failure. And uh, I think we lose a lot of that in the digital world if we don't really seek it out because, you know, the Photoshop is really accurate and precise and perfection. Mm -hmm. And then the digital, pr like even starting with the camera, first of all, like that is just absolute perfection in a box. And then we move mm -hmm. it to a... Photoshop and perfect it more and then we print it out on the perfect printer with a perfect profile and it comes out damn perfect <laughs> and you everything's keep pressing... perfect and it's so hard to mess it up like yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know you keep pressing print the same perfect print comes out you know what I mean and you get in the dark room and you can just have these incredible accidents that are one-offs that just add like for me that just adds an incredible amount of value to that one-off mm. particular piece because it's not going to be recreated in the same way ever again is it and that's similar exactly. to glitch i suppose yeah exactly and you know it's really interesting you say that like pardon me the perfect print coming out and stuff like this these when they print they don't actually they don't have a color profile attached to them at all um and if they do the color profiles are weird and broken so you get these weird prints from them as well the prints don't react how you'd expect oh, cool. um and so there's something like ah about that that's cool and I, at, at the, look, like everything, and um, my boss here, Gavin, at the Centre for Creative Photography always says your work is about, you know, four years before you. Um, and that is so true because this work, it's only really now that I'm understanding the value of it. So, um, yeah. yeah, so that was that. Um, just, one, just on that process a little bit more because I've tried mm. this and I think some other people are going to Google and try it. And it's mm. like, it's like, it's incredibly frustrating. Yep. Or at least it can be. I think if you release the expectations that you're going to get something good and just enjoy it for the fun and the and the rush of what might be, it, it's not as frustrating. But I was like wanting something as gorgeous as the glitches that you're getting here. But they're, for me, they were like one in a million type thing. I kept trying it and it would mess up this and do funky things there. And look, to be honest, I probably wasn't creatively ready for the outcomes that were happening. And I was probably searching for something that was never going to, you know, be presented to me or, or maybe it was presented to me and I wasn't ready to accept it, if you know what I mean, but jump out there and try it, but just give us a quick, so you basically, do you grab a JPEG or a TIFF file and put it into yeah. the... So, or you can grab any kind of file, right? Yeah. Um, but TIFFs are usually the most stable because they've got the most information in them. And what you would do um, is you use an audio program you can use audacity i've had students who i've taught this to use um oh what's the adobe version of it Audition, I'm trying to think it, it, uh, oh bleh. anyway uh, adobe uh, comes with it if yeah. you have the adobe creative suite but i prefer audacity it's free and basically you'll get the sound waves and at the beginning of the sound waves there's this section that'll look slightly different um you gotta eyeball it so you can't destroy that bit you've got okay. to actually leave that part and then select the rest of it and it works best if, for me anyway, if it's like, yeah, it kind of works best if it's it's kind of um, you're just grabbing little bits and doing little bits to certain sections. And then you save it out and so convert it back into an image and it will most of the time 
it will break. So what I mean by that is you'll try and open it up. And first of all, Photoshop won't read the files. I have to say this straight out of the oh, bat. Okay. Um, Photoshop will not see your images because it'll go, they're broken and it won't, it'll, it'll have a freak out. So you got to open it in um, if you've got Microsoft Paint on your computer. I'm not sure about Macs. Um, this stuff tends to work a bit better on PC just because PCs are more forgiving of glitching. Um, and yeah, so you would do that. So, and for me, um, these are very raw glitches. This is probably the only stuff that I've done with yeah. super raw glitching. Um, I have no idea what filter this one is here. Um, I was just dicking around and hoping for the best, but, um, yeah, it, these are what I would get straight out of the, yeah. the program, um, out of audacity. But when it, when I actually, when you see images that I've made, they're often layers upon layers upon layers of glitches. So I would have done a whole bunch of different ones and spent a day usually just reveling in the weirdness of what comes out. Um, and then I'll pick a bunch of them and put them together, which I'll show you. I'll skip these for the moment. Um, so this is one of those. Um, this one's an image called Technologic. And this is the first it. time I actually did this process of adding everything together. And so these are what I was getting out of the software oh, yeah. at the time these ones weren't necessarily audacity i can't uh these were like a, a bunch of different techniques i was using um this was this image here was just shifting the channels a little bit uh there's a bunch of different stuff so and you can see all the weird pixels and um they all came together to make this one um, notice I'd already actually photoshopped stuff as well. So I already had this motif of the head and the twigs um, and then, you know, glitching it afterwards. So it's usually like I come up with something and then I get really frustrated with that because I can't make it happen any further. Yeah. And then I'll glitch it out and layer them up with blend modes and I'll get this. So I'm not a traditional glitch artist. Normally like glitch people, um, purists, you know how we've got like, oh, it's got to be straight out of camera and that's real photography. Uh, no offense to you guys, but yep. no effing way. Um, and then there's, you know, glitch is the same. There's that same kind of thing where oh, I come straight out of audacity. Uh, that's, that's exactly how it should be. Well, I'm not that person. Um, yep. I've got to mess with it a bit. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. I love it. There's a couple of questions here. Do you mind if I just um, run please, them please questions? Then I don't feel so like what's the word? Self-grandizing. Who knows? <laughs> uh, where are we? Uh, someone, someone asks. Gee, are we able? Are you able to let us hear an example of the image sound? I'm not sure that we've got that ready to go. Do you? But um... I don't. I can do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. That'd be awesome. Do I have Audacity loaded up? Let's see. Why not? I wasn't prepared to do this, but screw it. We're all about like failures today, aren't we? It's a yeah, failure day. Absolutely. Let's see what happens. Okay. So this is Audacity. It's a free program. Oh, bugger. Can I do a reshare? So hang on. I've just got to share my screen yeah. with you again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, screen two. Share. Can you guys see that? I can see. Yes, absolutely. I can see it. Lovely. Okay. So this is this is Audacity and it's like the simplest of files um, or simplest of, of whatever. Um, and I'll just actually, I'll just make sure that this sharing is going to share my computer sound. There we go. Sharing computer sound, microphone, speakers, that should be fine. Um, so we go to import um, and we go raw data, okay, there you go. Um, which is really important. Uh, desktop, let's find, don't look at the crap that's on my desktop, everybody. Oh, yeah, um please don't judge me are you, are uh let's like have a look i'll grab tile, something do you tile your whole desktop with icons like just everywhere uh i'm not too bad <laughs> but i i just i have stuff like i'm just trying to find something that's going to actually sound good um open okay so um we've got byte order big endian or little endian you've got to pick which one um and okay. yeah i don't know what any of that means to be perfectly honest and that's part of it um, that's the best part of it. Yeah. So as I said, there's that little bit at the beginning that looks different to everything else. If you guys okay. can see that, yeah. um, that's the header of the image. So that's all the information that talks about the color profiles and all of that kind of stuff. This here in the middle is, um, your, let's see if I can make that bigger, your image data. Let's play it. This can hurt. So I'm just going to take my headphones off for a sec. If anyone <laughs> who's wearing headphones, just make sure you've got your audio down a bit, just in case, um,
Can you guys hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds sounds That's like just, rain on a tin roof. That is static. <laughs> Let's have a look at this bit. There you go. Oh. <laughs> So that's that's kind of what it sounds like. And then if you were editing this and playing around, like you would select a section and let's go effect, I don't know, distortion. Cool. Apply. And that's done something. Okay. Um, and then we just export it out. Uh, so we go, oh, this is new. <laughs> um, oh, there you go. Uh, but, yeah, we would, um, I haven't done that's this right. actually for that's a little right. while. Export that's audio, I think. Mm. Yep, here we go. Other uncompressed formats. This is how you do it, everybody, by the way. Um, encoding, yeah, I think that's right. I think. Um, and then see how it's got the WAV file on the end. Uh -huh. You make sure that says JPEG. I think this is JPEG, whatever your. Whatever you started with. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. It's going to argue with you and say you shouldn't be doing this. And you're going to be like, damn straight, I shouldn't. Um, <laughs> Where are we? Desktop. Uh, this could go horribly wrong. Notice how it's like broken and there's no, yep, no you know, preview. Open with. Um, oh, we've got Paint 3D. Lord knows if this is going to actually open it. Oh, well, here we go. We're, we're... And no. then it's broken. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. So, that, I mean, that's good because that's, I mean, that's kind of the frustration is, yeah. You know, you expect it to work every time and, and I don't know, 90%, 50%, whatever. It's just not even going to open, not even going to do what we hope it's going to do. But then you've got those one little moments when it does work or it does happen and, and you get those, you know, as we yeah. said, those incredible. Yeah, I'll show you some glitch processes a bit later that are a bit more forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, that so one is not forgiving at all. And as I said, it works best with TIFF files. Okay. because there's more data jpegs cool. will break a lot quicker especially your smaller jpegs um even though they're a lot easier um yep. yeah and that image sounded like um static but some of them will be not anything like that so let's have a look do you guys want to hear another one sure i don't know what you guys want so it's interesting oh. it's exciting or uh, at least for me just pretend you're talking to me and we're having a great time and looking at glitching and yeah, sure actually, let's see if we can it. hear this one. I don't know if it's going to actually do anything. There's your... Oh, that might be the same one, that's why. Um, blah, 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 blah. Raw data. Um, mm, let's try something with not much. It's so often kind of more fun if it's not um, there's not a lot of data in it. Let's try that. Could be could be a total fail. We'll see. That's what it's all about. Uh, I've imported that over the top of everything. Is that something you can do? Can you layer can you layer and merge files? Yeah, you can cut and paste and stuff. It's never gonna you've got more of a chance of it breaking in sure. that case, but um yeah. Try it and see. Try it and see. I don't I don't know. Um all right, I'm just gonna remove headphones. I've hurt my ears doing this, so <laughs> same yeah um that's all right let's... at home we can try it and uh yeah try it oh here we go nah yeah try it at home i'm as you can see this is such a i wasn't going to show you guys how this works because i was like ah oh, this is going to be ridiculous <laughs> but um you will that's get right. a lot of plain static and Absolutely. um but you'll also get some really surprising beautiful things often with images that have a white background and a, an object in the middle um yeah, yeah which is where that comes from in my work so beautiful cool. thank you for sharing that i mean that's it's such a creative process that's you know you know so critical to some of your work here and you're just being so open and sharing it's incredible yeah um yeah it's a thing it's a thing <laughs> so yeah i thought i'd show you these as well yeah um, i love these they're so whimsical yeah these are i i'm showing them um not because um, so a lot of photographers have, um, I have my work that I do, my glitch work and I do it as a passion. This stuff I'm not as passionate about. I did it um, and somehow, it, uh, so these are shadow puppets, um, built little built scenes often with a lot of fishing line and stuff like that. Um, and these ones are the images I make 
to sell. So this work kind of carried me for a couple of years, weirdly enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to. Um, if I'm honest, I love the glitching stuff more. It's more interesting, but then I'm a nerd. So I don't know that people, you know, want glitching on their wall. Um, this I is do. the stuff I did for people's walls. Um, so uh, this was Carl Sagan, a tribute to Carl Sagan. It has a lot to do with... Um, uh, so some of my one one side of my family are very very um, religious, and the okay. other side are not. Um, and I was erring towards the not because you know that was a thing. Um, and uh, it was just kind of an exploration of that. So like exploring the world and exploring the universe. So um, then there was this one. Um, this was created for Sight for All, which is a twenty four hour photography thing where you can you've got twenty four hours to make an image on World Sight Day, and that was that that's what I made um this one also combines illustration and stuff like that so it's mm -hmm. not I never entered it in anything because it's not a photo as such it's um this little dude is actually a little bit more illustrated um and they this bit up here is all twigs and down here is all twigs so that's that's those yeah um but yeah this is my sister I'm just not my biological sister but this is my sister Moira um this is more glitch work. This is the stuff when I started to really understand what it was I wanted out of glitch. Um, so not all of it is glitch, um, yeah. by the way. So the only real glitch in here is the face. Mm -hmm. um, there's that little bits that have been cut and pasted. Um, so it's cut and pasted from a, a glitch file. Um, but you can also open up images in Notepad. Um, which I'll, I'll do it now so you can have a look at what it is. Was this, this image was part of the portfolio that won the APA illustrative? Yeah, it did. Um, yeah, was which that, was. That was the first time around? First time uh, you won that? Uh, I, um... <laughs> <laughs> I know you've won a couple. No? <laughs> second. It was second. the second one. Um, yeah, so she this will take a little minute. Um, but basically what I've done is convert is opened this image in notepad and it may crash my computer. I just realized that as I was doing it. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but, uh, you get all this, it's going to take a mo, um, you get all this text and stuff. Um, and so this image here, you can see all these bits of text and whatever in the background. Yeah. So to take this photograph, I opened it up. Right photographed the text through a coll handmade kaleidoscope lens. Um, so handmade kaleidoscope lens is where you get like three mirrors or four mirrors or five mirrors, sticky tape them together, and then you hold it up over the top of your lens and you get kaleidoscopes and stuff like that. Um, oh, yeah, that sounds fun. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and if on my Facebook page, I think it's on there. You can see the, the file. Um, so let's have a look if it's actually open now. No, nah, not responding. No. Very good. Um, <laughs> this is all about failure today. Oh, you guys are going to be like, right. she's lying. This it's is my, not actually yeah, what happens. It's my fault. <laughs> it's, it's, we've got the gremlins here. It's okay. That's all right. It's we'll fine. just keep it's chucking fine. along. Gremlins are happening. Um, yeah, so it's just like, it's just photographs of all the, the photograph uh, yep. converted into text. So that's really all it is. It's not actually traditional glitch. It's just me having a play. Yep. So that's laid over the top and... Um, also resized this image down in Microsoft Paint and resized it back up again because if you resize an image down and pull it back up again in Photoshop, Photoshop's going to try and soften the image and stuff, whereas doing it in Paint, it's going to like, I think it was Paint. Okay. Might have, who knows? Um, and, yeah, to get the the pixels, to yeah. deliberately pixelate it and stuff, um, and the reason I was doing this is because I think, um, I, like I knew I had a really clear directive here, is that we've lost our, the concept of what photography kind of is in the digital world. Um, so back when we were in the darkroom more, um, we're still in the darkroom. Um, and if you haven't tried it, give it a smash because it's so much fun. But um, yeah, this one was really about um, the integrity of an image and what is an image and what is a file in a digital world. And the reality is, is that I think I come up against the whole, it's not, you know, oh, it's got to be straight out of camera and it's got to be, you know, I'm sorry <laughs> to put on like the voice, but it is always that guy um, <laughs> who's doing it. And um, yeah. And 
I am not interested in that. I'm interested in, um, I sort of looked back through history at what, when our big technological leaps in photography were. And so we had, um, you know, we obviously had the invention of photography uh, that, that started out and we celebrated that as the chemical fixing of photography, right? But um, even before that, I think it was Vermeer who was doing, like had the camera obscura and the camera, if you haven't seen a camera obscura before, mm -hmm. um, totally black out a room completely and poke a hole, like a tiny little hole in a wall or in a, you know, um, I've done it with garbage bags where I've just cut a little hole and you'll see an upside down projection of the outside world in your room mm. um, if it's dark enough. And so, you know, um, painters used to sit and trace that ever so carefully. That was our first iteration of photography. Um, and so then after that, you know, we had all of these different chemical processes and stuff like that, but the very first digital photograph was a scanned photograph and um, that was in the eighties. And uh, it was often, you know, and then later on um, the one that really interests me is phone photography. And I love this story. Um, you know, I, photography, phone photography was created because some guy waiting for his wife to give birth um, had a mobile phone and a camera and he took a photo. Uh, he, he was sitting there in the waiting room programming and created the camera phone. Um, and the very first camera phone image that went out um, was like went out to a, th a thousand people and it was his child. And I think something really interesting about, you know, it was, it was the most seen image as quickly as that, you know, yeah. uh, in time. So for me, digital photography isn't necessarily about these prints and stuff like that. It's actually about the translation of how we translate this data um, so I want to include that. I want to remind us that this is pixels. Yeah. Um, you know, when I first went to art school, my first lesson, I'm ranting. You can tell me to stop. No, keep going. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the first thing they did was they made us hold a piece of charcoal. And I remember thinking, I am paying how much for this? Um, but they made us hold a piece of charcoal and like, I want you to repeat after me. This is just a stick. This is just a stick. This is just a burnt stick. This is just a burnt stick. It's not about the burnt stick. It's not about the burnt stick. Um, it's what you do with it that counts. And so that's really what I'm talking about. I'm trying to remind us that this is just pixels. This is just like all the time and it's about that kind of stuff. So that's that's really what I was trying to say in this. And, um, yeah, that's yeah. that's my rant. That's my TED Talk, everybody. Absolutely. We were, we, were, we were chatting about that last night about what is a landscape photo and um, and we, and we it looked like a, so much fun. Uh, I wanted yeah, to be there and I was of, teaching and I was like, nah. <laughs> it was inter it was an interesting conversation. And, but one, at one point we got round to like, um, digital photography and the influence or potential influence of AI coming into that and, and the ability mm. for essentially everyone with very low entry level skill will be able to capture pretty epic photos and have something like Google post process them to a extraordinarily high level. Mm -hmm. And, and the question was, how do we, how do we um, elevate our own photography above that? And I think it's just it's just about the human element to a certain degree, and and building that connection, the connection to to the landscape if it's a landscape photo, or the story, or the emotion, or you know, it's what it's what you put into it, isn't it? At the end of the day, I guess that makes yeah. It... This is just a burnt stick, my guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, look, this is just this is just ones and zeros. It's all it is. It's nothing particularly special. Um, and in my case, it's hundreds of different ones and zeros all put together. So um, this one's also got bits of Tetris in the background. Um, I don't know why that's significant, but it is. This is called Tetris. Um, Tetris so yeah, cool. this is some of the, this is kind of what I started with, with that image, by the way. I just thought I'd show you guys. Um, so this is some glitching. Oh, cool. um, this is actually done at Hair of the Dog in Queensland. So um when I was there, this was in front of people and it actually worked and I was so stoked. Um, so yeah, um, that's, yeah. Um, another beautiful one. Yeah, so this is another glitch. All of this is little lines of um, sound that's in there. Um, it's actually a second image that I've, like of this blurred kind of, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's just what it like, it's, look, honestly, the process doesn't matter. It's just like, does it look cool? Yes, no, tick the box. Like that's. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, this one, when it was shown, um, so the headphones that Rach is wearing there um, were, so the cord, 
uh, she's holding, that actually translated into a real chord. And at the bottom of the piece, you could pick up some headphones and listen to what she was listening to. Um, uh-huh. And this one sounded, it was like bleep bloops and aer- it was like an airplane going, it got louder as it went. Um, and so this was a really fun image. It's sort of the only time I've done something like that for this, but I, yeah, I loved the output um, because I spent so much time in print getting that cord, the same size as the headphone cord, so you could pick it up. Um, but, yeah, um, I think that's what's really hard about competitions and stuff like that is you don't see that, that side element, of it. Yeah. And yeah. was the, the sound signature, is that the sound signature of the finished image or the starting image? Not that it really matters, but. I don't remember. Yeah, it's I think it's important. like the set. Yeah, this stuff here. It's it's a bunch of different ones. Mm. Um, I think as I was going through, I remember it. It didn't have all of it on it. I was trying actually trying not to glitch for this. Um, I was trying really hard, and then I was obsessed. So it just came in there anyway. You can't get away from yourself, as Craig, like Crudson said. So yeah. Um, it made sense, and I liked the idea of. I always love this idea of stuff breaking that initial um frame on you know the yeah, in photography yeah, like we've that. got the matting around our images so i love stuff breaking out of the matting to remind ourselves that it's just a burnt stick guys like it's not special <laughs> but well yeah. it, it's special because of what you put into it you know yeah it's not necessarily totally. the process or the you know but it becomes yeah. special by what the artist has infused into it i think yeah absolutely absolutely um so you were just talking about ai yeah. Uh, and I actually want to show you the full image of this because it would make sense. This one actually is using AI. Okay. Um, or a version of. Um, this is using Google's Deep Dream. Wow. Oh, cool. How psychedelic. Um, come on. Render. Render. You can do it, my friend. <laughs> it's not doing it. Oh, there, oh, we, there go. we go. Okay. We got it. <laughs> uh, this image here you can see... Um, has little eyeballs and stuff yeah. through it. Um, so I had to, so there's a little weird alien going through there. This is my dog, Richie. Um, this is a piece of paper cut out that I had. It's not, you know, but um, so Google's Deep Dream, there's little dogs in it. If you've ever played with it before, um, oh, it's a you. neural network and the neural network, it's basically... Um, you know, we've got facial recognition and stuff like that. If yeah. you, the easiest way to kind of explain it, and I, I don't get it completely myself. Um, and, and that's kind of part of the beauty of it. I don't always like to understand what I'm doing. Um, I love this. Look at this little alien scene in there, which is super cool. <laughs> so cool. Uh, and there's a bus. I see it. A car. Um, so the original image didn't have all of that. It was just the stars like over here and the people and stuff. Um, and some swirly colours. Um, and, um, yeah, Deep Dream is a neural network. Facial recognition, yeah. So facial recognition is, you know, where we see faces. And then if you reverse facial recognition and you say, okay, well, I want you to recognise things in my photograph. And uh-huh. this is what, you know, when you were talking about Google creating the perfect landscape photograph, this is exactly what it is. And at the, that time, this is where that technology was at. And so what Google did was loaded a bunch of images into this neural network. Um, and a neural network is a bunch of computers essentially. Yeah. And um, asked it to then recognise these things in photographs. And what happened so that's what this is um, when it and, and to to enhance them essentially, um, and so when you run something through Deep Dream, um, you get uh, kind of ideas or remnants of what a photograph could be, um, and a lot of it is dogs. So there's a dog, which is why when I was making a picture of my dog, I went with the dog. Um, so it's it's Google trying to recognize things in a photograph and just not getting it right and it's bloody beautiful um, it is it is so, so beautiful it's so it just it reminds me of I was really um, sort of inspired to create that psychedelic kind of art you know mm. that kind of just swirly cosmos of stuff going on and morphing into each other and that's kind of it's kind of what's going on there and it's just absolutely gorgeous and I have no idea what you're even talking about but I'm going to go and google it and, and can i be honest i don't either <laughs> no idea just doing stuff like plugging away and uh like i make my i've got so many computer science friends who are just like oh my god yeah. <laughs> <They're a mess. laughs> um, 
<laughs> but yeah. Just try stuff and, and see if you can break it, right? And see what happens and see the beauty within it. And uh, wow. Yeah, that's it. Um, I, yeah, I, I just really enjoy it. And I love that. Okay, so when you see this in print, it's not until you get right up in there and you got to get right up in there. Um, Cause on screen you look at this and it, it kills me because on the website, this I didn't is what know it was there. Like. I didn't know it was there. I didn't know that all that gorgeous detail was in there. Uh, yeah. Is there any way you can put like a, a detail crop as a second image in that? I don't know. I think so. you, yeah. Cause I, I, to be honest, I didn't appreciate this image until now. Yeah. I, I didn't I, see it. Yeah. yeah. It's one of my favorites because of that. It's just got so many hidden little things. Um, yeah. And it's only ever, so this is only half of the size of it. Actually, I think it's only a quarter. It's actually bigger than this. You see more of the deep dream. Um, and this is, from what I know, the largest deep dream in the world um, because it's, from what I know, I need to find somebody who's done a bigger one. Um, I had to do it all in sections. So this is in um, cut up into about 100 sections mm -hmm. um, because the software couldn't cope with it and my computer couldn't cope with it. So I had to, over about a month, just run these 1,000 by 1,000 pixel sections through Deep Dream to get it this big. Um, and the idea is that I want it printed as a massive wall print. Um, but we'll see. I haven't actually. Yeah. yeah. It'd be incredible. Yeah. So. Thank you. It's so interesting, all these <laughs> creative ideas to sort of go and get stuck into. It's, yeah. I forget that it's cool. It's really nice hearing somebody else like talk about it too because I don't really get that excited about it anymore it's like cool yeah I did that that was a like I look at this and see all the anxiety um, <laughs> of, uh yeah computer crashes and stuff breaking and wondering why I'm doing it um but yeah this is just another one that I love yeah um, it's cool I like I, I like the um what's tell me a little bit about you've got this really distinct color um, palette going on with those beautiful greens and pinks is that something that you've sort of um, I guess consciously incorporated and continued with yeah it's the color of glitch so okay. if you go back to I'm just going to try and go back well we're frozen I think it's sorry You're right. everybody let's just make sure oh hello, hello. you've loaded <laughs> how you doing it. buddy <laughs> so just so you can see this is the that file that I opened before oh, I think I might have just killed it again yeah, all good. Um, and you can see here, this is the header. It's got that I made it in Adobe Photoshop CC Windows when I made it. It's got my name in there. This is the, yep, how it was made. Yeah, I've crashed it again. Great. All right. Well, let's go back to Lightroom. Um, <laughs> so that's what a photo looks like in text other than, rather than sound, does it? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's in text. So, um, yeah, uh, let's have a look. Okay, so we've got that one, that one. That one, that one. We've been through this. What were we talking about? I'm gotten lost. I'm getting really excited and getting lost. Well, ah, I was talking about the color palette. Oh, the color the palette. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So, this is the color of glitch. Come on. I'm sorry, guys. Now that it's just killed everything. <laughs> <sighs> Welcome to my life. Do you guys mind if I just shut down Lightroom quickly? No, go for it. Absolutely. Embracing the weirdness, everybody. Yeah, embrace that weirdness. I'll have a look over here for some questions. Please do. Daryl asks here, um, this is truly creative, creative. Is the image a surprise and something that goes through various iterations um, as you're um, playing with the glitch or playing with the image? The glitches, yes. Um, Deep Dream, what you get out of it is what you kind of get out of it. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of hard to... Uh, give me a sec. No, so right, depending right. on the glitch, I'll show you some a bit later that's um, a bit more controlled. Um, I might even load it up. Have I got that hard drive here? We'll see. I might not be able to load it up because um, I've just got so much stuff here going on. Um, yeah, so it depends on the glitch. Deep Dream, it is what it is. Yep. Um, the images that are the... Come on, baby. So I'm having a little freak out, guys. Just a little bit worried about what You're I've right. done. Um, the beautiful part about computers is you've never completely effed it. All right, here we go. Um, yeah. So I hope I answered that question. I don't know. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. Um, dep yeah, depends on the glitch in the process. Yeah. 
Yeah. And do you, just one more question on that uh, for my own curiosity, is your creative process, is it something where you're just using your intuition and allowing the process itself to kind of guide you to the finished product or, or are you more, you have this incredible idea of a vision and trying to get to that vision as a sort of a problem solving exercise? Um, no, nah, it's just intuition all the time. So yeah. um, I'll start something. So I actually started this image thinking it was just going to be a cute picture for Facebook of my dog. And it is a cute picture yeah. on Facebook of my dog. Um, um, and uh, it's just Richie on a white background. Yeah. And then um, I just started playing. I was like, oh, this could look cool with like a space background. So I added a galaxy background and then, oh, this could look cool. With, and then all of a sudden it's this. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm like, hey, what about, oh, this is because um, I was doing these images mm -hmm. um, with all of the sticks and stuff. So I photographed a bunch of sticks and I was like, okay, well, um, what if I, you know, I was playing with Deep Dream for some other stuff. Um, and what if I kind of Deep Dream it and see what happens because dog, Deep Dream, Deep Dream is so creates dogs. By the way, if you do look for Deep Dream, just be really careful you don't run into Deep Dream porn. <laughs> it's genuinely a thing. So just do it away from the kids, please, because um, yeah. you will run into that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so it just kind of ends up next minute I'm sitting there for months deep dreaming each individual little square of this image. And then I'm, you know, so it's, yeah, it's a whole process. That's awesome. And the, um, and back on the color palette. Little bit. Yeah. The color palette. Okay, great. That's the color of glitch. So, okay. um, so the, the glitch tends to work on your channels. So your image has, is made up of three channels. Um, if you're working in RGB, red, green, and blue. And then when they, when the channels sort of move a bit, so you can see the channels have moved here mm -hmm. in this image. Um, and same with this one. Uh, so you get cyan magenta so you get subtractive colors cyan magenta green all of that so that's kind of what's happening here is yeah. that it's just the shift of the channels and that's the colors that it goes so i'm just working with those so my work has really been inspired by glitch and inspired by those color palettes that are happening yeah, yeah. okay cool yeah um so this one's a channel shift but if i'm honest down here this little bit this is just some fake glitching if just straight up, um, I just wanted the look of glitch. I couldn't be bothered sitting there for hours <laughs> trying to find something to look like what I wanted. Yeah. And I wanted something very particular in this case. Mm -hmm. So I just Photoshopped it. Not going to lie. Um, the, her, the channel shift, which is where the two red, yeah. uh, I think I can't remember what color, what channel it was, but that shifted, that was glitch, but the other bit wasn't. So yeah. Um, yeah. I've included this because people ask me if I get paid for my work and I do. Um, and this is a piece that I did for Ovation um, Youth Theatre and they were doing a piece on, oh gosh, what was the name of it? I'm so sorry, Ovation. They are in they, um, a theatre in Mount Gambia um, and they, this was, they they wanted that spacey kind of look. It was, I think it was about cyberbullying and stuff like that. So um, this was some of that work that I did. Um, that's more of the mountains work that I was doing for sale. Yep. more of it um and then we come to here oh, i love this it's this is my so favorite powerful and disturbing and beautiful at the same time <laughs> yeah this is um this is my best mate kate party and anyone who's ever been to a live presentation of mine kate party is always there she's one of the most important humans um she's always really you know on it but i uh, um this image is a different type of glitching so um you've got your normal interactive glitches which is like um audacity and stuff like that this is done using pro a program called processing mm -hmm. um and processing is um made for kind of it's a programming language for graphic designers now i don't write my own programs i'm just going to throw that straight out there i'm not smart enough for that um, but there are a bunch of, there's a massive glitch community who's doing this, who I, I have such respect and, and grateful. I'm so grateful for the problem is I can't um, often credit them with the filters that they make or the not, it's like filters, right? It's pretty much filters. Um, but um, 
the this particular pack of glitches or glitch programs is called Glitch Me, and you can find it on GitHub. Um, and this image was made by using some of those programs. Um, there's one where I've got a touchscreen computer and I had this idea or this dream that I wanted people to be able to just touch things and, you know, run their fingers over it and change the image. So that's what's going on in here. This is actually a glitch that usually you would move your mouse and mm -hmm. the image would warp and change um, through programming. Um, and you can, I mean, I can program a little bit so I could change bits and pieces of that code, but I was just touching my screen and watching the image fall apart. And I, it was inc oh, so powerful. I don't know. I get really into this stuff. Um, so, and her face ended up like weird and cyclopsy and I feel really bad because Kate's face is actually effing gorgeous and I've just ruined it. Um, but yeah, so there was that. And then um, as well as that, while I was doing it, when I saved it out, there was some JPEG artifacting. And I realized that I wanted to make an image that does talk about JPEG artifacting because JPEGs are such a part of our community, right? Like we JPEG images or, yeah. yeah. So this is JPEG artifacting so much so. So I've, I've saved this image a thousand <laughs> times. I've run it through a couple of processing scripts and stuff like that to get that yeah. JPEG artifacting um, and that, in, yeah. you know, to show the integrity of our images falling apart, that this is just a, you know, yeah. Um, but it's also about the story of Kate leaving. Um, so she moved to New Zealand. I'm going to cry. Um, she moved to New Zealand and it's been really sad losing her like that, but yeah, I still talk absolutely. to her all the time. So um, yeah, it's just sort of about this person going. So yeah. It's just, it's just spectacular. Like I just, I love everything about it. Like there's such a, <laughs> there's such an incredible freedom in some of those little details. You know, painters often talk about the freedom yeah. of a, and the energy of a particular brush stroke. And I can see just in those, yeah, yes. look at, look at that. I mean, that must just um, look absolutely incredible on a, as a big print. It's yeah, it's really something as a print. Cause I, I want prints to look digital. I don't, we work, you know, I, there was this trend for a while where we were trying to, you know, visco filters and stuff. We we're trying to make stuff look like film. And I was like, what yep. are we doing? It's yep. digital. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, uh, yeah. And look, the first area that I saw it was in her hands. I love this. This yep. is like, oh, yeah, me, to me. Yeah. That was the area um, I was specifically talking about when I was suggesting like the, you know, just those one brush stroke that just can make a whole image, you know, that, that one little area just seems so appealing for some reason. Oh, this, yeah, this makes my heart melt when I see it. I'm like, oh, this is, yeah, um, this, this is the guts of it. Like it's the image showing its integrity, which is that it's just a digital image. It's also like, you know, talking about something, this is, one of my this is my favorite um so yeah um yeah beautiful um so i'll show you i think this is the one i have a feeling we talked about this at appa was that right there was one i'll just so we talked about i'll show these in a minute this is uh this one i think maybe i'm not sure um um we had a conversation at appa is that what you're referring to or? yeah i think we did yeah, yeah. from memory um I don't remember the specific image. It might have been this one. Yeah, I was a bit sort of overwhelmed with uh, meeting one of my heroes at the time. <laughs> Just so, a normal person, nervous, guys. Nervous <laughs> fan. You're like, oh, it's G. Oh, you're, you're amazing. You know, we've all been there. We've all had those moments where we, yeah. So anyway, it probably, Turned out I think it was. I think, I think it was. You can't thing. even wake up on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, this one to me, I, it, um, it reminds me of the Photoshop process, like an embossed filter or something like that, almost with the 50% gray there. You nailed it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm remembering the conversation. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, did I crap? I didn't, I haven't got the parts to this. Um, so this is pixel sorting and pixel sorting is, um, so effing cool. Um, it's a filter once again. Um, uh, sorry, a, a processing filter done with processing two. So there's two versions of processing, processing two and processing three. One's older, one's newer. That's all it is. Um, and somebody wrote this beautiful script and I, you can look this up if you want to Google how to pixel sort. It's actually super easy to do. So, and do it, please do it. 
Um, I love people delving into these alternative processes because I think in the digital world we don't do it enough. Mm. Um, but this one, um, this is my friend Jace, and we were shooting. He was wearing a suit um, and I wanted dude in a suit looking down. I, that was just like the idea. But um, pixel sorting looks like this. These were originally images of the sky mm. and it's basically um, the gradient. So the highlight, um, it'll look for the highlight, I think, and the shadow. So you'll have a highlight and a shadow and then it will sort out the pixels in between. Oh. So you get these weird gradients. Um, oh, my God, I'm using that for sure. Please do. It looks incredible <laughs> on landscapes. Oh, my God, oh, landscapes. What a romantic sky you could create with that is what I'm seeing. You know, you flip that over and you've just got this incredible foreboding sky. Or Yeah. Wow. So good. So good. Yeah, do it. I'm, I'd be keen. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, um, that's what they look like when they first come out. And so what I did was I've pixel sorted him a couple of times. I did the sky um, and then I just chucked him over the top on blend modes and this is what's come out. Um, and then when I printed it, it didn't, because this has this beautiful three-dimensionality to it that I love. Um, and um I've got a kind of gross story about this, actually. I don't know whether I should tell now tell it. Um, but um, has this beautiful three dimensionality on screen because screen is obviously backlit, but in print it just went Bleh, and I was like, oh. Um, and so my friend Mark Zed came up with the idea of maybe printing it on separate layers. Um, and so I got a bunch of. Um, I went down to office works, my friends, and I printed, I separated him out. So I selected just with quick select, I selected his face, I selected then his hair. So I sort of picked out the bits that would go back three dimensionality and then um, printed on um, shitty office works transparencies yeah. um, and then layered him up um, by a layers. So I had my, the final print of this is actually about four or five different bits of, of image all laid up on top of each other and it was impossible to get static away so it's got all my dog hair in it um and I was heinously sick when I was making my one for Appa so I've made a couple of these but it's really really sick when I was making one for Appa and I was in a rush and my body just was giving out and I had been throwing up all day and as I was doing this I just go <laughs> onto the print and went oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> And then had to like, this is so gross. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, and then was like, it's okay. It's okay. It's a shitty office works print. It's fine. It's fine. So I went and rinsed it off under the taps and disinfected it, put it all back together. And it was all scratched and had crap all over it um, and, and dog hair in it and all kinds of stuff. But it looked great. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's, so these ones are shown in that way. And when you walk around them, it doesn't look like it's printed on transparencies, but um, it's, it goes more silvery. So the transparencies are silver. Um, and you, when you move around it, his face just goes whoosh and changes and it's oh, a really cool. surreal experience. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Pixel sorting, um, more pixel sorting. Have you looked into doing what's that, what's that printing form where they print on those little prisms that, and as you shift from one side, it, it changes the photo. <sighs> I, don't, I can't remember what that's called. Have you looked oh into it? Oh my God, though? the laser etchings, is it? I think. I yeah, it's got a particular name incredible. like, um, oh, is it dye something or other? Or, yeah. No. And do you know the ones I mean where the picture, yeah. basically those old, you know, um, cliche type postcards where the dolphins move and stuff, but you can do oh, some. Um yeah, 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 yeah. I have. Okay. So um, lenticular printing. That's what I'm, yeah, lenticular, yeah. So I am playing around with that, actually. Um, I've got a few lenticular prints um, that I've done. It's so much fun, um, but it's really hard to get the lenticular lenses in Australia. So if anyone knows where to get to get the lenticular lenses, tell me, because um, I want to do them myself so I can sit at home and see them and play yeah. with them and, and stuff. I know Atkins Pro have done them before um, for an Emma Hack show, but I really want to play. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen some cool <laughs> stuff with that. Yeah, and the lens, does the lens just sit over the top? So essentially you set it up with a Photoshop action or something, I would imagine. Yeah. Blend those two images together and then the lens allows you to merge between the two, does it? Gotcha. Yeah, so I've only done the image swap ones. I haven't tried the 3D ones. Um, you can get different lenses. So it's just like a piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. um, and basically there's um, a site that actually provides software for it um called image flip and um so i did that um yeah with a robot image i was doing but uh which i've got coming up later but um 
yeah and you've got to like match the lines to not just your printer um and how your printer prints but to the 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 lens um so that you get the like you know everything at the right angle and everything like that so when you flip it 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 works um i haven't perfected it yet so and i want to try the 3d ones because that would be sick but that's something i you've got to really think about it and i'm not very good at planning um so (laughs) yeah awesome awesome cool i love that um, All right, what are we looking at here? Um, yeah, so look, my health took a turn um, a little while back and um, I'm having a really good day today, but some days I don't have a good day and that can be a thing. Um, and I'm fine. Don't worry, everybody. I'm not dying. Um, I just, just it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, and I couldn't, I no longer really have the, patience or the energy to sit in front of a computer for hours on end which is sad but it's also quite liberating um and um I got given or gifted from a a beautiful friend who I'm not sure wants to be known and I don't know um if you do want to be known though please do tell me um um an Olympus EM1 Mark II um and which is a small camera as opposed to, you know, we lug out the big gear and stuff and I'm a, you know, I'm a tech person. I love gear, but then I don't know, I wasn't loving, I I wouldn't pick up my kit because it would be too heavy and too hard to deal with. Um, So I started this work. This is shot on a mobile phone at the time. So this is before I got the EM1 Um, and it's just shooting. I I saw an advertisement at random for um, these, microscopes from a school so these are just really simple microscope images um shot down a microscope a crappy microscope um uh with a mobile phone and um they've become the show moon which i'm going to be showing at um shimmer this year and they unleashed this ridiculous journey for me so um of just single captures and stuff like that um i haven't got the or do I have the completed image here? Oh, here it is. I've just realized that there's two that don't have. Um, I'm really sorry for the swearing, everybody. This is going to, there's going to be swearing contained in this little part <laughs> um, up on screen. So I'm not going to read it out. But um, so I started telling little stories. Um, my partner is a um, an illustrator and she does comics. So she, I was quite inspired by her work um, and her comics and uh, we kind of met because I was doing similar stuff like comics and stuff. And so I went back to that. Um, so this is just about an, a whole relationship played out from beginning to end of somebody being just a bit crap. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so um, just microscopy through that. Cause I felt like I had a lot of energy and a lot of, yeah, yeah I don't know. That speaks um, to me. That's I've been feeling like the last couple of weeks, you know, when you really, you sort of, you sort of lose I suppose lose a bit of energy, and then you start half-assing stuff, and then um, yep. and then that sort of impacts your confidence, you know, yes. and and you feel, oh, you know, everything I do is just a bit crap. So <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what's going on. Like, and it was really hard because I didn't know if the images I was making were good, and I still don't. Um, without all of the bells and the whistles and the glitch and the cool stuff, and that's not to say that I won't do it again. I just right now I can't, and um. Yeah, so I, I'm trying to figure out who I am without it all, actually. Um, and these started something in me. Um, and then this is when I had the EM1. And and the really amazing thing about that camera is I'm not a gear person, but that camera changed my life um, because I can look through the viewfinder and see in black and white, for one thing, okay. um, and see shapes and forms. And at the same time, I was also making a garden. Um and for the first time and growing seeds for the first time and stuff like that. So this work here is part of Moon. Um, so I've got the, this is part of the microscopes and stuff. So I actually put a microscope on my camera now um, and shoot these kind of weird, surreal, messy, blurry yeah. things. Um, this I love. This is actually a... Um, cabbage moth and it's the butt of a cabbage moth and if you've ever looked at cabbage moth bums 
Um, oh, sorry, they're um, they're chrysalises. They're about yeah. this big. Yeah. Um, so this is actually like about a millimetre. Um, they have knots and crosses and hugs and kisses on their butt. It's really cute. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. I like this that. Is a roach. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, um, and I love this because it's an automatic glitch. Like the um, uh, the chromatic aberration of these lenses because they're shit. Um, they've got the glitching automatically built into them so Brilliant. which is really nice it's a beautiful um, thing. And this the, is those same the em1 is it it's not a dedicated black and white though but you can see through the uh, it has it got an electronic viewfinder that you can switch to black and white can you yeah so i shoot um raw and jpeg at the same time and um use the art modes on the camera um to basically shoot completely black and white so as i'm looking through that view electronic viewfinder i'm completely black and white um yeah. and so my work started to become more about form and shape and shooting and um exploration um i love this because it's that chris that same chrysalis that i had before but it looks like a oh uh, looks like a sarcophagus or something so um yeah there's the bum um and shells of bugs and bugs um oh, this is nice. working with uvi vf um so um uv light uh but uv light we don't see it we can't see uv light but we can see the chemical reaction of the uv light onto flowers and stuff so this is the flower fluorescing um is what you call it oh. um so when you look at some flowers under uv light they um and that um there's a guy in the US, um, Steve, who's a, a effing legend, who um, kitted me out with stuff um, or helped kit me out from UV Optics. Um, and um, he created the filters for me to do this. So it's a torch with a filter on the end of it. Um, oh, so this wow. is stuff. On... That's like almost, it reminds me of like deep space constellations and that sort of stuff. Right. <laughs> it sure does. Like Andy Campbell was on a couple of weeks back and it's just like so similar. It's just oh, gorgeous. He's such an inspiration of mine and I want to be able to do what he does, but I just don't have that stuff. So this is actually me trying to be Andy Campbell. All right, I'm glad you picked up the reference. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's gorgeous. Um, yeah. So, and this is, um, so that's Moon. That's all the stuff for Moon. So Moon is about exploring light and optics and stuff like that. And then this is... Um, this is the final days before the apocalypse. Um, and this was all shot originally in black and white, but then um, I don't know, those glitch colors, here they are. Oh, I love um, it. I love it. And it's interesting you mentioned Gregory Crudson earlier because I've just recently discovered his work and sort of fallen in love for the first time. You're probably jealous of that first time discovery. I am. <laughs> And I was going to ask, you know, is there any any some sort of um, maybe influence from Gregory in this series of work in particular? Because it, uh, he likes those funky colours in his work as well and makes them work. And I'm I'm a, I'm really jealous of someone like yourself and Gregory that can use a funky colour palette and make it so appealing. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Well, I mean, it probably is. Like, you can't get away from yourself, right? So. It probably is. I mean, most of my work is heavily inspired by Gregory in some way. Um, you know, you don't have an artist give you a gift as he did to, you know, recognize yourself um, to me. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But um, the color palette is actually, there's a photographer in Johannesburg um, and I, I'm really sad that I can't remember her name, but she, she doesn't have much in this series. I was just looking around for, um, if anyone wants any of these names, please feel free to message me because um, my memory is terrible for names. Um, but, yeah, um, I just was finding this, I don't know, I saw her work and she, in Johannesburg, you know, it's really dense and stuff like that, and she had these buildings and then this slip of pink um, windows and it just spoke to me um, and I was like, oh, my God, there's, and I'd been already shooting this stuff in particular. Um just, yeah. uh about you know already shooting it just before COVID hit so um yeah and then I saw her work because I was in isolation I was trying to find stuff and all of a sudden this work that I'd been shooting in black and white um for about a year had made sense um and I put it into that color palette and the color palettes 
um, actually destroys the image completely. So it's not what I would normally produce because I'm obsessed with perfection, even though I'm not clearly, but I still want everything to be perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it shows up all the artifacting in the images and stuff like that, which I feel is very me. Um, so yeah, look, it's just trying to find myself and who I am as a single capture photographer instead of a digital processing photographer. This is just a Lightroom preset. If you want it, you can have it, but, you know, <laughs> so yeah. No, it's, uh, uh, tell me a little bit more about this work. I'm interested because it seems so like, um, time specific to right now, like so appropriate, you know, the name and the, the, uh, the loneliness, there's no people within these cityscapes. Um, but were, yeah. you, were you already working on this body of work before COVID was even was. a thing? Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see if I've actually got more of it on the desktop because there's not much here. Maybe not. Um, so Final Days was, um, yeah, I started it two, about two years before. Um, every six months my... Um, class goes on a class field trip here at the Center for Creative Photography. So I teach introduction to photography, um, both online and in person for the certificate four. Um, and we would go for walks, um, photo walks and stuff like that. And one of them happened to be at night. So we were in this car park here shooting and, um, my really great mate, Mark Zed, he shoots architecture um and not just architecture he shoots a lot of stuff but his main thing is architecture and this is me pretending to be mark zed right like totally i'm always if i want to you know it's like me trying to be andy campbell before um but not being able to um but he has the same camera as me so i was like cool let's try see if i can be mark zed um not that the camera matters but anyway um so i was shooting this for two years beforehand yeah. all lonely and empty and um yeah and I was also going on night walks and stuff like that, um, which are quite lonely. I'm a massive introvert. Um, I don't really love, I'm not very good at people, um, which people don't believe because I'm quite loud, but I'm loud because I'm really anxious. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So these were all shot in black and white. And then, um, yeah, COVID hit. And then this work felt right. Um, I wasn't going to release it, but it started to make sense. Um, and then I released a couple of the images from it. Um, and Chris Anderson, um, who's a great friend of mine, was like, if you don't make a book of that, um, I'm going to be angry. So I realized I probably should make a book of it. So now this is a book project um, and I've shot over 200 of these. Um, so, uh, yeah, and just about uh, I started shooting during COVID. So these ones are during um, the shutdown. And now I'm shooting more towards the end. So there's the final days before the apocalypse, which is some of these final days, uh, the days during the apocalypse and the days after. So, um, and it's just, just my street, um, a one kilometer radius of my house um, that I've shot. So the ones I shot on the class field trip. And then there's the ones that I shot completely alone during the, during the shutdowns. Yeah. And then there's probably going to be the ones that I'm shooting now, which is afterwards. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think it was Bruce Moyle said over here that he thinks the colours, well, for him, they really appeal. They really make this body of work. And I tend to agree. It gives a, a certain uneasiness, which really resonates. And what do you think in hindsight in comparison to where they started off as black and white? Do you think the colour totally. really adds to it? Yeah, um, the colour palette um, was really important. I, as soon as I saw that woman from Johannesburg's work and I saw that strip of pink and I went, <gasps> that's what I want. Cause I love those colors. You've seen it throughout the rest of my work. Absolutely. So um, yeah, I, I, but I wanted the colors to be a bit violent, you know, previously I've been very, um, hang on. Yeah. Soft. More, yeah. yeah. Soft. And then all of a sudden I, since I haven't been well, it's all gone black yeah, okay. um, yeah. and dark. So I wanted it to still be me with those colors because this is, and this is so far from anything I've shot. I'm normally people and makeup artists and all of that crap. Yeah. Um, and here it's not, this is completely stripped back. Um, and it's just me riding my beautiful, I've got this gorgeous bike. I have two gorgeous bikes. I love bikes. I don't drive. Um, I just ride bikes and um, chuck my camera in the back and go for a ride. Um, and yeah, I love this one in particular because it's like, I can remember the cold, it was freezing. 
I was really scared. Um, I got really scared at the beginning of this because I not being well and then having this virus um, was quite frightening for me, worried I was going to get it. Mm. And we think I did. So there we go. But I was okay. fine. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so this was like it was freezing and all, nobody was around. There was not even cars. It was so weird. And then just this light, you know, occasionally the the street guy, this here and this here, um, you know, would, would flash and make the noise, the brrr of the footpath noise. Um, so, yeah. I love in that the oriental massage one, I love the green light, you know. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a yeah. little quirk, you know, there's no one around, but the lights are still sort of telling, you know, the people to stop and go even though there's yeah. no cars there to stop and go. Totally, totally. Cool. And, I, yeah, just there's something about this empty store and the massage sign still there and the street was cold and empty and this is across the road from it. Um, normally there's people here even at night and cars here even at night. Um, like I live pretty much across the road from a shopping precinct. So, yeah. um, you know, and this, there's always, even at night, there's still dryers going and it just wasn't even happening. It's like, like us on Facebook and we're out of order, like, you know, yeah. so, yeah. And was the wall, was the wall green or have you gone and switched it from another color back over to green? Um, let's see if I've actually got some of them here. I've probably got, you can see my, how boring my process is for this. <laughs> yeah. This is some of them that I was shooting a couple of weeks ago. Um, I started taking a uh, flash out with me okay. um, as well and it's really as simple as I've got these presets here that I've made oh, cool. um, and I click on them and that's it <laughs> that's Done. my that's my process everybody <laughs> um, and then I adjust them and the preset that relies really heavily on um, tint and, and temperature yeah. so you just play yeah. around with that as to where you want it to be and we're done. We're doing a book, guys. <laughs> I can't wait for the book. Make sure you let me know when that book's coming out. Yeah, uh, hopefully as soon as possible. Actually, I love this one. This one is some graffiti I found and I'm in love with it. Like, how great is this? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because um, my neighbourhood's quite lefty and quite um, hippie and um, the the I'm photographing a lot of the graffiti that's come up and um, this sort of, I've photographed a lot of graffiti now, but this one, when was this? This is only a couple of weeks ago, um, came up and I was like, I have to photograph that. That's ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. That's unreal. So that's your latest body of work, this one that you're showing us now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's only been resolved over the last few weeks. Okay. Um, so she's brand new, which is kind of weird for me. I'm not used to actually shooting something and putting it out there. Usually I shoot something, you know, with all the glitch work and stuff and it's there for, you know, like <laughs> months, um, years even sometimes before I, I release it. But the recent work is very not that. So, yeah. And um, just quickly touch on, and there's, and guys, for you at home, there's links in the description for G's website, Instagram and Facebook. Jump over there and show some love with a like and a follow and a support, but also um, Prince. Prince, where do we get a hold of Prince? If we want to add one of your incredible prints to our collection, how do we go about that? On your website? So I don't sell prints on my website. I have a gallery, um, Della Liff in um, Rundle Mall here in Adelaide. They do online sales of my work. Okay. Um, any, so that's mostly for We Could Have Moved Mountains, which is these guys here. So if you love these and some of the glitch stuff, so these ones, um, they've got those. They can get anything else in too. If you are interested in any of the recent work, which is the this stuff, mm -hmm. um, Moon as well, and Final Days Before the Apocalypse, which is these guys, mm -hmm. um, send me a message because it's actually just too soon for me to have released prints. Okay. So... Um, send me a message and I will keep you in the loop as to when the print sales will begin on those. The um, moon will be in September and final days will be when the book comes out, which is um, at the moment a wholly nebulous situation because we just got the logo made. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> and what's the best way to contact you via contact page on the website or messenger? Yeah. On, yeah. Yep. 
Email me on ggreenslate.com. There's a contact link there. Go there, um, flick me an email. And, you know, if you want to know about anything, any of the processes, please go right ahead um, and, and ask. I do, um, I'm teaching most of the time. So sometimes my responses are really short and sharp and that's not you. It's just that I'm having to do it really, really quickly. Um, so please, if it is short and sharp and shiny, just um, don't be offended. <laughs> They won't. They know how, you know, how incredibly sharing and beautiful you are now. So they won't see that in that context. I'll just, uh, guys, if you've got any questions, shoot them over now before we uh, wrap it up. But I'll have a quick look here, G, and see if there's any, any questions. Oh, Mark Zed's here watching along. You mentioned Zeddy! him a couple of times. G'day, Mark. How are you doing? Zeddy just heard about oh, all the love, I hope, that Yannick, I was giving him, Yannick's trying to pretend well. to be him and then turning out having a completely different body of work that looks nothing like his. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the way it kind of works, isn't it? Influence is a funny thing, isn't it? No, uh, I think, you know, we're all a product of, of everything that we've been through and gone through in the past. And I think if we can get that to come through in our artwork, all those influences, all the good times, the hard times, everything that's ever impacted us. I mean, I think yeah. that's, that, that'd be my goal as an artist. Is that something that you're conscious of as well or not really 100 percent, 100 percent. um look you can't get away from yourself so you know we talked at the beginning about that image that I had with the the vines and stuff and um the fact that this image I had no idea I was making this stuff so and I know I had no idea you know and, and there's also Gavin who says to me um your work always precedes you by about four years which is so true um so I don't know what this work's going to become at the moment um and I'm fine with that because I'm already there. Like, you know, this is me working through COVID. I know what that is. Mm. Um, I wouldn't have admitted that maybe 10 years ago. I would have been like, oh, no, this is about the uh, transcendental values of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, insert art wank here, which I'm my university upbringing made me very good at. Um, but now it's just like, nah, I was dealing with my shit. <laughs> yeah and that, I mean, that's a, it's a good way to deal with shit as well, isn't it? Like art, yeah. like just take your shit and put it, in Photoshop or on paper and <laughs> get it out Cram of here. Cram it in there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I do a lot of that. I do a lot of that. Just get it out there and free it to the world without necessarily having to, you know, verbalise it if you don't want to. Yeah, and I think what's really nice is you meet people like that too. Like through doing Final Days, um, I don't know, the conversations I got to have, because um, I, when I, as I was doing the Final Days stuff, or I'm still doing it, I would post, I post it to Instagram. So if you want the most up-to-date, levels of weirdness um that's all there and um the people would be messaging me I said like how scared I was one day and um people just messaged and we had conversations about being scared and yeah. like, come on if that's not the nicest thing to come out of this I don't know what is so yeah and I think you can face your fears with a camera in front of you as well sometimes I'm not suggesting that people go and put themselves in the in dangerous situations but for example I did a it's still incomplete body of work called Fear of the Dark, where I would go out at midnight with my camera set at like 6400 ISO and do weird motion blur in the dark mm. of the forest and the trees. And you get, you know, you get these weird colors and, and incandescent lights coming in and all this sort of funkiness. But I was trying to capture the fear that I was feeling in being in that scenario. But through doing it, you kind of face the fear and it's not that big a deal at the end of the day. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely threw. Um like what during the isolation stage, I needed to get outside, right? So the only real way to do that, and this is after I had gotten over being sick and um, stuff like that um, and had been in my isolation, I didn't want to go near people, um, obviously, because I was terrified of it. So this one in particular, I went outside at two o'clock in the morning um, on my bike so that I, if I saw anybody, I could move away as quickly as possible and stuff like that. Um, and I was riding around the neighborhood kind of masked up and, and um, it, it allowed me to face the fear of actually being outside. Cause I, I do, you know, if I'm, I'm somebody who, if I'm not careful, a situation like this is going to mean that I become a harder girl of hope again. You know, I've, I've been that kind of person where I don't leave my house for months at a time. So, um, you know, this made me a little bit too comfortable to stay home. So it, yeah, I was really able to face the fear of going outside and, and to normalize the fact that everything is dead and quiet. And, um, I live under a flight path as well. So normally there's planes going oh. over and noise and yeah. So definitely this is facing some serious fears about going outside and about 
dealing with people and about all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then that ends up filling the body of work with an en- with that energy as well, which is, mm. you know, I mean, that's what it's all about, I think. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, Not too many specific questions, just a lot of people just telling us, um, you know, thanking you and how inspired they are to go out and uh, try some things and, and uh, break some things maybe and <laughs> mess break some things shit, up. Break shit, make art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, mess some stuff up. I'm, I'm going to get out there the rest of the afternoon, go and make myself a cup of tea and start messing some stuff up myself, I think. Please. So. <laughs> Please do. Please break some stuff. And sh- uh, show them to me. I want to see. I get really excited if you do. Um, the last time I presented on this was just like on Glitch, which was a couple of years ago now in New Zealand. And um, friends sent me, um, you know, their versions afterwards. And I, one of my favourite things that happened, I presented Glitch at Hair of the Dog, um, in Queensland a few years back and um, somebody, oh, Janet Clawson, Janet Clawson, um, yeah, he, he watching? Yeah. gave me a print and of his work and I've got it proudly on the wall, but it was like one of his award-winning prints that he glitched. So I've got this great glitched out image. It's so exciting to see what people do. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, Yannick's done some crazy stuff in his time too. Did you, you remember that uh, infrared series he did of motion blur? <gasps> it's so wild. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely so cool. Wild. Such a cool dude. Um, all right well gee I'm sure you've got other things to do is it back are you teaching this afternoon or yeah I'm uh, as soon as I finish this I'm straight back to the coalface so um, back to organizing students and making sure that they are happy and lecturers Mark I hope your class went right last night Um, (laughs) uh, I'll put your class online now (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, yeah, thank you so much. I'm like super inspired and, uh, you know, you've inspired me throughout my journey already, but now you've inspired me again through the, some of the more, the details that you've shared with us today. So thank you so much. I'm sure there's many, many others out there that you've influenced today that are going to go and try some things as well. That's awesome. Thank you so much. This is the first time I've talked like this in a couple of years. So it's thanks for facilitating. It's been really lovely. Oh, awesome. Absolutely awesome. All right. What I'll do, I'll wrap it up here, guys. Thanks so much. Hit that like button and make sure that we tell YouTube that this is worth watching. Stay with me, G. And um, as I close this down, ah, there we go, back on the full screen. (laughs) Guys, yes, thanks for joining us. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. We do this Tuesday, Thursdays, 10 a.m., this same time slot. Um, Hit the like button, let YouTube know that this is worth watching. Or even, yeah, share, if you're inspired by this, share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram. share it with the world. I mean, it's um, this kind of creative art is an incredible thing and gives a lot of, you know, it gives a lot of freedom. And as I said, it can be very therapeutic at the same time as well. So thanks again for joining us. We'll see you back here on Tuesday. G, I'll leave it to you just for a final goodbye. <laughs>